To finish off my discussion on membrane channels, I'd like to focus on yet another category of channels we call aquaporins. So for quite some time, we believed that the only way water molecules can actually make their way across a membrane from one side to the other side of a membrane is by actually diffusing through that membrane. So this process is known as simple diffusion. Now, we weren't actually wrong to think that because the membrane is in fact permeable to water and because of the small size of these water molecules because the fact that water molecules don't actually have a full charge and because we have so many of these water molecules colliding with the membrane these water molecules will in fact cross that membrane via the process of simple diffusion now in 1992 things actually changed because in 1992 we basically discovered accidentally a special type of channel found in membranes known as aquaporins and we realized that these aquaporins are channels that selectively funnel allow the movement of these water molecules across the membrane and the rates at which the water molecules moves uh, through these aquaporins are much higher than the rates at which the water molecules actually diffuse through that phospholipid bilayer membrane. And we'll see why that's important in just a moment. So basically, there are certain instances inside our body and inside the bodies of other organisms when these cells must be able to actually quickly and effectively move the water molecule from one side to the other side. And that's when these aquaporins are actually used. Now, it's important to note that aquaporins are not actually ion channels. What that means is they don't actually allow the movement of molecules that contain charge or ions. They only allow the movement of water molecules. So they're water channels that allow the movement of molecules, water molecules, down their concentration gradient when the cell requires it. So from a high to a low concentration. So when would our cells of the body need to basically take the water and move it to the other side of the cell membrane very quickly? Well, one example is when we produce tears. So tear production basically involves being able to release the water very, very quickly. And the same thing is true for producing saliva. And so those cells of our body actually use aquaporins to release the water as quickly as possible and the rate at which that takes place the water travels through these aquaporins are much higher than the rates at which the water actually moves through that membrane another example are red blood cells so red blood cells actually contain a high concentration of aquaporins in their membrane and that's because red blood cells as they travel through the capillaries must be able to actually control and regulate the volume inside the red blood cell and the pressure inside that red blood cell so the hydrostatic and the osmotic pressure Another location where we find aquaporins abundantly are the cells of the kidneys. Why? Well, because the kidneys basically produce the urine. They produce the filter that eventually becomes the urine. And one important function of the kidneys is to basically reabsorb as much water as possible. And this must take place very, very quickly. In fact, if we examine the cells found within or next to the lumen of the collecting duct, we'll see that these cells express a high concentration of these aquaporin channels. And these aquaporin channels are used to basically reabsorb as much water as possible back into the capillary. So the water moves from the high concentration to the low concentration. And again, just like any channel, these aquaporins don't actually use use energy ATP molecules. Remember, only membrane pumps actually use energy. Channels like aquaporins don't actually use ATP. <coughs> now, what exactly is the structure of an aquaporin? Well, aquaporins basically consist of six membrane-spanning alpha helices. 
and the inner region of the these helices, the inner region of that aquaporin actually contains this relatively narrow passageway that is lined with hydrophilic amino acids. Why hydrophilic? Well, because these hydrophilic amino acids within that narrow passageway of the aquaporin must be able to interact in a stabilizing fashion with those water molecules because water is in fact a polar molecule. On top of that, at the center of that narrow passageway are these amino acids that contain positive charges and we'll see why that's important in just a moment. So this is what a cross-section of the aquaporin would actually look like. So we have the cell membrane, we have a high concentration of water here, we have a low concentration of water here. So for instance, we can imagine that this is the lumen of the collecting duct and this is the inside portion of this particular cell. So we have this aquaporin. So we basically have this internal passageway shown here. And these water molecules basically pass along that hydrophil a hydrophilic narrow passageway in a single file. So this passageway is so narrow that they can only make their way across in a single file. And so essentially this one bumps this one as a result of electrostatic repulsion. It propels it to move this way and that process continues. And this is so effective and so efficient that one million of these water molecules move along this channel every single second. Now, what about these positive charges? So basically, as a result of the presence of these positive charges at the center of that passageway, ions, for instance, hydronium ions or protons will not be able to make their way across this channel. And that's important because if these channels somehow were able to actually allow the movement of H plus ions, what that would do is it would disrupt the hydrogen ion gradients within our cells. And those gradients are important because as we'll see in a future lecture, we use these proton gradients to actually create ATP molecules. So we see that ions such as H plus ions will not be able to pass across due to the presence of the positive charges in that passageway at the center of that passageway as shown here. This means that aquaporins will not actually disrupt gradients such as the proton gradients that exist inside our cells which are used to produce things like ATP molecules. So we conclude that aquaporins are not ion channels, but they are channels. They are selective channels that allow the movement, so quick movement of these water molecules across the cell when the time arises. For instance, in red blood cells, in the cells found that create the tears and the saliva, in the cells of the kidneys and so forth. And these aquaporins are not exclusive to eukaryotic cells. Many prokaryotic cells, such as bacterial cells, also express and use aquaporins.